CataractCoach.com. FACO before vitrectomy surgery. Pearls for cataract surgery to ensure vitrectomy success. So this patient has a cataract, and you can see it's providing a pretty poor view of the posterior segment. The patient also has a full thickness macular hole that's going to need to be repaired. So the vitreoretinal surgeon requests that you first fix the cataract, put a monofocal lens in, so that the view for performing the vitrectomy and membrane peel is a lot better. And you can see this is quite the compromised view because of the cataract, especially the cortical spokes there that encroach on that central part of the lens. Step one is this, make a sufficiently long incision. You need to have an incision that has a relatively long tunnel length. This incision has to stay closed and sealed during the vitrectomy, and especially as there's higher pressure in implanting the trocars, etc. Now this patient's not doing a good job of fixating, so we'll put the chopper in to help fixate that eye. And that leads us to step two, which is make the capsorexis a little smaller than you're used to. So while I normally like a five millimeter axis, I'm gonna aim here for about a four and a half millimeter axis. Why is that? Well, I want that optic of the eye well to be very securely overlapped by the anterior capsular axis. And the reason is in the post-op period of my surgery and the post-op period of the retina surgery, if you're gonna put a big bubble in the eye, a gas bubble of C3F8 or SF6 or even just air, that can exert a posterior pressure. And I don't want that posterior pressure to push the IOL optic out of the bag. So again, the two most important things for this whole procedure are number one, make sure the incision stays sealed. So a good long tunnel length, you can see here, that's a sufficiently long tunnel length that'll seal well. I also was intentional about nicking those limbal vessels right at the incision, is that a little bit of bleeding? That's gonna ensure great long-term sealing. If you make an incision that's too short, don't hesitate. Put a suture in, put a single 10 nylon in to ensure that that incision stays shut. And number two, of course, we talked about was the rexus. Make the rexus a little smaller so that even if there is posterior pressure from a bubble of gas in the posterior segment of the eye, the vitreous cavity, that bubble of gas is not going to push the eye wall optic out of the bag. So here we're gonna just chop the lens in half. I'm gonna bring up each half and emulsify it. The rest of the cataracts are just pretty routine. Now, you wanna get a single piece or three piece lens here in the eye. You, either one should be a reasonable choice. And in general, when you have comprised or, or problems with macular pathology, compromised macula, you wanna put in a monofocal lens here. So in this case, we're gonna uh, aim for about Plano and putting that monofocal lens in the capsule bag. So this nucleus is not super dense, so it comes out pretty easily. We also want to do a good job of really cleaning up that capsular bag. So when our retina surgeon looks there in the retinal periphery and maybe looks a little bit even outside the optic, then we're not going to have any issues with impeding the view there. So you can see there's a little bit of an epinuclear shell still in the back, and that's okay. We'll get that all out with the IA probe. And uh, what's the timing for the vitrectomy? You know, I think the patient should have at least a couple of weeks of healing. You want to wait till the capsule bag contracts down. And once that capsule bag contracts down to hold the IOL optic a little more securely, I think it's reasonable to proceed with the vitrectomy. So depending on the case, that could be two weeks later, three, four weeks later. If you want to be super conservative, you can wait a, a couple of months. But I think certainly two weeks on the low end is probably reasonable enough. And again, the patient will have that vitrectomy done as well. Now, could you do them all at the same sitting? Why not just do the cataract and at this very same sitting, go ahead and do the vitrectomy membrane peel? Can you do combined phaco vit? And the answer is yes, you can. And that sometimes is a reasonable choice, but other times you really want to wait for that capsule bag to contract down and hold the lens a little bit more securely. And you can certainly get a lot of that contraction and real good grip or hold of, uh, of that lens in a, about a two week or, or, or so post-op period. So in general for these, I do prefer to do them in a staged approach like this. Now, interestingly, the patient's other eye, we also did the cataract, but we did that one first. The cataract level is the same in both eyes, but why do we do the eye that had a normal macula first? Well, because that eye has a better visual potential. So I want the patient to be able to have this cataract surgery 
and the good eye and have a really nice outcome. And then for the second eye, their patient's more understanding that, yes, of course, we're not going to be able to give you the same vision because that central macula has that big macular hole. So again, as promised, here's our single piece acrylic lens, monofocal lens. I'm going to put that in the capture bag. And as that goes in, we can really judge and see what's the size of our rexus. And I think we did a pretty good job here. So we'll get that lens delivered in the bag, get the habits opened up, and there we go. Do a little capsule polish, even there with the chopper. Try to clean that up a little bit. Now you can see that's definitely a four and a half millimeter rexus. And that is a six millimeter optic. And this patient's going to have a really nice outcome here. So again, using that chopper here, you can use any instrument you want to just do a little bit of polishing of those epithelial cells from the undersurface of the anterior capsular rim. And that'll clean up real nicely. So now it's all pretty much cleaned up. You can use dedicated capsule polishers as well. Or you can use the suction from the IA probe like we're going to do here. Let's get out all that viscoelastic from behind the IOL. and comes out pretty nicely. And let's get that lens set it up. And of course, of course it goes without say, retina people in general like it when you implant an acrylic lens in the eye. So don't put a silicone lens in. Makes it a little bit more challenging. Even if you're not going to use silicone oil in the surgery, sometimes there can be condensations um, during the air fluid exchanges in vitrectomy surgery on a silicone lens. And in general, these acrylic ones are a little bit better, better tolerated for patients who are going to have that vitrectomy. So here it is, end of the case. Let's take a good look at that incision, sealing this up. Just a little bit of hydration there centrally along the roof of that incision, going back and forth. I thought I'd show you this whole case start to finish. That looks great. And then we'll do a little bit more here, just sweep out and make sure there's no retained viscoelastic. And that's a pretty good looking case. So thanks for watching. Keep in mind, if you ever have a case like this where the patient's going to need a vitrectomy shortly after cataract surgery, number one, make a great incision that's long enough and seals really well. And number two, get that rexus down to about four and a half millimeters so that it's really going to hold the lens in place, even if there is a pressure from the posterior with a gas bubble. Thanks for watching.